folks. Thank you for joining us for another JS Drop from This Dot in This Drop. Eve Porcello from Moon Highway will show you how to set up a GraphQL API using Apollo Server, a Node.js implementation of GraphQL Server, using a schema and resolver functions and all in just 33 lines of code. Let's pass it on to Eve. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very exciting presentation on GraphQL. I'm coming to you live from this brick wall to tell you about some exciting GraphQL things. And the ex exciting GraphQL things are going to start over here, where all exciting things start with a blank project in VS Code. So what I'd like to show you today is how to set up a GraphQL API Using Apollo Server, Apollo Server is a Node.js implementation of an Apollo of a GraphQL server, I should say. And we're just going to get started with this thing from scratch. So we're going to npm install GraphQL, of course. We're going to install Apollo Server, and then we're going to install Nodemon, Nodemon, however you want to pronounce it. Nodemon is just going to help us to restart our project as soon as we add some code. And then we have some GraphQL and Apollo server dependencies, of course, so that we can actually build our server. So the next thing I want to do is over here, now that those dependencies are in there, we have our index.js file. Our index.js file is going to be the location where we're going to create our server. So let's go ahead and do it. We're going to import Apollo server from Apollo server. I'm using these require statements just because if you have an older version of Node, it will work seamlessly. So we don't need to worry about those types of things. If you wanted to use import statements for this, of course you could. All right. So anytime we're going to build an Apollo server, we need two things. We need the schema, which is this document that describes all of our API's types. And then we also want to include the resolver functions. Resolver functions are the functions that are going to go to our various data sources and collect that information so that it can be accessible to anyone who's trying to get information from our API. So first things first, we're going to create our server. Now this, or sorry, the schema, server, schema, all those words start with S and they are different. So schemas are these documents that describe our API's types. And the most important type arguably, in our schema is the query type. So this is just a list of all of the different queries, all the different questions that we can ask of our server. So let's just start from the basics. We're going to say hello. This should return a string. We use the exclamation mark when we want that string to be non-nullable, meaning that it can't return null. So our schema and our resolver functions have a very tight-knit relationship. If we have in our API a schema type called hello that returns a string, we need a function down here on line 11 that returns a string as well. So we're going to say hello world, and then this should return that string. So the match has occurred. Both of these are returning the same type. All right, so then once I've done this, I'm going to say new Apollo server, and then remember that time I told you that all you need is a schema, our type defs, and resolvers to make a server. I wasn't lying. That's what we need. So then we're going to call server.listen. We will chain on a dot then function. Dot then is just going to wait until we've listened. And then we're going to console log a little message for ourselves, letting us know that our server is running at URL. Sweet. So now, at this moment in our life, it is time to check out our package JSON, letting us know that we have a start script here that we can run. So if I open up my terminal and I run npm start, this is going to fire this up on localhost 4000. So what do we got going over here at localhost 4000? We have, of course, an Apollo Sandbox. So Apollo Sandbox, as we're seeing here, they're going to save a few of your previous queries. It is an in-browser tool that you can use to send a query 
to a GraphQL API. So now if we send our hello query, we should see that data coming back. Notice that the query matches the response exactly. So if we ask for hello, that's all that's going to be in the data. Nothing more, nothing less. And that's pretty cool. So that is our first query. We've made this sweet little relationship between our type definitions and our resolver functions. And now it's really up to us to start to build out our schema a little bit further. So this becomes a very important moment in the life of any GraphQL developer because the question is like, are my data sources already hooked up yet? Do I have to talk to that one engineer who's always out of the office or is a little cranky about questions? Or can I actually prototype this thing without having to worry about that data uh, from the start? And the answer is because we have chosen an awesome tool like Apollo Server, we actually don't need to wire up those data sources just yet. We can think about the schema first, and then from there, we can actually build out our API's data sources without any hesitation. So we can actually prototype this thing from the beginning. So if I got rid of those resolvers, let's say I don't have any data to back up our server just yet. If I try to run this now, we're going to get an error. It says cannot return null for non-nullable field query hello. And that's because in our schema, I said I wanted a string for this. And it's expecting me to return one with those resolvers. Now, I did tell you that it's possible to get started with a prototype without the data. And the way that we can do that is this. On line 11, line 11 is popular today, we're going to say mocks true. Well, one line of code. And if I go back to our Apollo Studio sandbox, notice that our endpoint is here. We're going to run this again and check it out. We have some data coming back. So how is this working? Well, Apollo Server is taking a look at the types that you've put into your schema. It's looking at what types you're trying to return from these various queries. And it's telling you that let's just return some sort of mock data for that type. So let's say we wanted to return an age. So I'll say my age. Then I will, instead of returning a string, we're going to return an int. Back to our localhost 4000. Let's replace the query. We'll say my age. And now we'll run it and we'll see negative 12. I love when ages are negative. But this int is just going to tell us that we have some sort of data. The query is not going to crash anymore, but we're going to be able to start to mock this thing out. So let's say I had a user, and our user had a few different fields on it, ID, name, which is a string. We have a favorite color, which is a color of some sort. We will create an enumeration type, in other words, a restricted list of options for these colors. So your only favorite colors are allowed to be red, blue, and yellow. I'm so sorry if your favorite color is something different. Um, but this is going to be returned from this. So now at this point, I could, in the old days of GraphQL, wait for two weeks to make sure that we had our data source set up or wait for a day to write those functions. But I don't want to worry about that. This is just a prototype. We're going to rely on those mocks to handle all of this data for us. So it's going to return some sort of default string. It's going to return some sort of default int. So now what I can do, pretty cool, is I can say all users. Again, the query type is just a wrapper around any of the qu queries that we want to be able to send to this API. So here we're going to say user. We're going to use two exclamation marks, meaning that it can't return null anywhere inside of that array that all users returns. And it also can't return null as the entire value of all users. So back to our Apollo Studio Sandbox Explorer lots of different names because it's a lot of 
different uses. So let's go ahead and query the fields we want. We want ID, we want name, and we want favorite color. We'll run it and check it out. We have our IDs coming back. ID is just some sort of intended to be unique human non-readable value with GraphQL. Hello world is our default string. And then we have one of these colors coming back. So as you continue to build out your schema, the mox true designation here is just going to mean that all of your fields that are part of that schema are going to be mocked. So this gives you this insight into kind of how GraphQL becomes a type system for your API in addition to this query language. So it's helping you out on all sorts of levels. OK, let me show you one last thing. Right now, we're saying mocks true. We're saying just return me any old string, any old number, any old color for those values. But it's also possible to customize these values as well. So what we want to do is we'll go to, we'll delete true from mox here on line 24. And then we're going to create a new value called mox. And we're going to set that equal to an object that is going to define custom mox for some of these types. So let's, for example, call int. Or actually, let's do, yeah, we'll say int. So int is going to need to be set equal to a function. And this should just return any number here. So my age at this moment is 37. Let's try to run a query again. My age should return 37. It's a custom mock. Anytime we see the int inside of our schema. So let's say we had age here, and that was an int. And then we added to our query all users with their favorite color, their name, and their, did I save this? No, there we go. Now 37 is going to be plugged in for that. So you can customize mocks by type in addition. There are many, many different options for custom mocking. I would encourage you to check out the Apollo GraphQL documentation for more on that. But just know that you can get started in about, let's see, 1, 2, 33. In about 33 lines of code, you can write your own GraphQL schema. You can tie that to some custom mocks. And then for any other fields that aren't custom mocks, we'll rely on those defaults so that we can start prototyping our solutions quickly using GraphQL. Get into it. It'll take you less than 10 minutes. And I hope this will be a great way of getting you started. Thanks so much for having me today. And I'll see you around the GraphQL community.